Good morning. I have six minutes to provide six tips. I'll call them steps, allowing for the treatment of most femur shaft fractures with an integrated intermediary device placed in a supine position. I'll use a recently treated patient to illustrate these steps. The most important Next slide. The most important step is thorough preoperative planning. This 22 year old COVID positive gentleman presented with this isolated subtrochanteric femur fracture following a motor vehicle crash. Phone windows from CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis confirm the femoral neck to be intact with proximal extension of an anterior butterfly fragment to the level of the lesser trochanter. Retrograde intermediary fixation is precluded. Uh, Integrate piriformis of trochanteric entry fixation with cephalomedullary proximal interlocking is indicated. Rotational parameters for reduction need be established. Goals for treatment of diaphyseal fractures include restoration of length, rotation, and alignment. Rotational malalignment is the most common deformity post intramedullary fixation, femoral shaft fractures. On the left of the slide, I am assessing internal and external rotation of the contralateral limb in a reproducible fashion with the hip and knee flex 90 degrees. On the right, I'm seeing obtaining an AP fluoroscopic image of the left knee and hip in the same rotation for intraoperative comparison with the injured extremity. Comparison will focus predominantly on the profile of a lesser trochanter. Though a true lateral of the knee may be more reproducible, the AP fluoroscopic image is significantly easier to obtain and generally adequate for uh, clinical use. Next slide. Whether supine on a flat top table or supine on a fractured table, the patient must be shifted to the involved side and draped so as to allow access to the trochanteric or piriformis entry site. This is in particularly important in larger patients. Next slide. For both piriformis and trochanteric entry devices, an optimal start, start site must be established. Trochanteric entry devices are generally designed to enter the femur just medial to the tip of the greater trochanter and piriformis devices, the piriformis fossa. A percutaneously placed chance pain can be used, utilized to counteract the typical abduction and external rotation deformity of a proximal femoral segment. I'm shown here on the left localizing the fracture site and optimal trajectory for percutaneous placement of a piriformis device. On the right, I can be seen placing a percutaneous chance pin, which allows for correction of abduction and external rotation deformity of the proximal segment, thus improving visualization of a piriformis fossa and allowing percutaneous placement of entry uh, guide wire and use of starting reamer. Next slide. Numerous reduction aids are available and generally allow for fracture reduction and guide wire passage in a closed fashion. Cannulated reduction tools, such as that shown here, small intramedullary nails, and chance pins can be utilized as joysticks. Partially threaded guide wires, appropriately placed towel rolls, and femur wrench can also be utilized. When an open reduction is necessary, a variety of instruments, including bone reduction clamps, bone hook, and collinear clamp can be used. Next slide. The sixth important step is to ensure an appropriate central endpoint is identified and maintained throughout. The femoral intermediary canal is linear in the coronal plane and establishing a correct entry point and endpoint will generally restore alignment Though treatment of some distal one-third fractures may require placement of a blocking screw or screws to maintain alignment. Next slide. 
These intraoperative fluoroscopic images confirm appropriate rotational reduction of the fracture in question. Next slide. Clinical evaluation shown here confirms appropriate restoration of resting leg length and rotation, as well as external and internal rotation similar to the contralateral extremity at 90 degrees hip and knee flexion. Next, systematically incorporating each of these six steps when performing supine integrate intermedullary nailing will reliably result in an acceptable outcome. Next slide. And thank you. <laughs>